Good evening and welcome to the debate. And boy, have we got plenty to talk about. <laughs> We're in the company of Darren Bent and also Paul Merson. What a night at the Etihad. A seven-goal thriller, but that doesn't tell half the story. It's absolute ecstasy for Potch and agony for Pep as Tottenham go through to the semi-finals of the Champions League. Liverpool cruise past Porto, but just how big an ask is it for them to get past Barcelona to the next round? Leicester City right now are in seventh place, but just one point covers them and three other sides. Is it a blessing or a curse, that potential Europa League spot? Plus, we'll also look ahead to tomorrow night's Europa League games. Get in touch tonight. There is so much to talk about. You can tweet us at Sky Sports using the hashtag TheDebate. This, indeed, is The Debate. So, only one place to start. Boys, is that, arguably, the most exciting game of football you've ever watched? Yeah, for me, 100%. I mean, quarterfinals of the Champions League and, and for the game to start, the first two minutes, and to have, what was it, five goals in the first 25 minutes is, is insane, but arguably, for me, it was one of the greatest I've ever seen. What made it so, Paul? Well, I, th I think the early goals made it. I think, you know, the way Tottenham went about it as well. I mean, to, to go down that quickly and then to bounce back the way they did, and it was just end-to-end -end and fair play to Tottenham, you know, to, to go... 2-1 two, one, two, one up and then you think you, you're virtually going to be through and then you go 4-2 down, you're out. I mean, it was everything. And then at the end, I mean, wow. I mean, one manager's <laughs> <Yeah>. completely <laughs> devastated, the other manager's over the moon. And then within VAR, it switched around the feet, the emotions again. I mean, I, you won't, you go a long way of seeing a game like that again. Especially the, the, the magnitude of the game as well. It's not a run-of-the-mill game. This is a quarter-final of the mm. Champions League with... To, to meet Ajax in, in the semi-final. I mean, don't get me wrong, Ajax are a good team, but it's, it's not Barcelona, yeah, it's not Real Madrid, it's, it's not a team like that, so wow. Can you only imagine Pep's emotions? He's dancing down the tunnel, <laughs> thinks that Sterling has scored a hat-trick and then it's chalked off by VAR. Yeah, I mean, it's contrasting with both managers. Pochettino's got his head in his hands. Pep's run up and down the touchline. Looked like he was going to get maybe another defender on to maybe try and sew up. And then 10 seconds later, it's disallowed. And it was the right decision at the end of the day. But as Paul was saying there, I mean, for, for a quarterfinals of the Champions League, for it to end in that, that manner was, I mean, what a game. I mean, it's, it's, it's a disappointing for, for Manchester City because I thought for the last periods of the game, as we saw, they dominated. I mean, they kept possession. They kept going and going and going. But then ultimately they could see that goal at the end, which again VAR comes into it again and has decided the outcome of this game. Was it such a good game that we would be wrong to criticise any part of it? Was it like two boxers just slugging it out, playing haymakers, or were there elements that contributed to the way the game went? Yeah, I mean, you can, you can pick holes in a lot of the goals. Do you know what I mean? Even Laurenti's goal, I know it went to VAR, but. You know, it's a free, it's a, it's a, he's, yeah. he's six yards out and he's, he's hit him virtually on his arm or his thigh and gone in. I mean, it's bad marking, isn't it? I mean, you could open things up, but, you know, I have to hold my hands up to Tottenham as well. I, you know, to be 4-2 to be down and look like being out and to come back, you know, you could easily be disheartened there and they kept on going. They weren't really in the game, no. had a couple of glimpses, but, wow. I, I, I'm still sitting in here, I just can't believe, I, I can't believe what I've just watched, I really can't. I mean, how many times do we sit down and watch a game and you sit there at the end and you think, well, that never lived up to it. Yeah. I, didn't ex <laughs> I didn't expect this game to be like that. I didn't expect it to be like that. I, I thought it would be a, maybe a 1-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-1 game, tops, tops 2-1 to Man City and, and, you know, and Tottenham go through on the old way goal maybe, but... I, I, not in my wildest dreams did I ever imagine anything like this. To be fair, after the, the first goal went in after two minutes, I expected Man City to go two, three, four up and think, oh, the game's out of sight. But for Spurs to come back the way they did, um, I knew some would be a danger man, but for him to go bang, bang as quickly as they can, it just opened up the whole game. Be honest. Yeah. How many times, as we sat watching that, did you think one or the other would win it? How many times did you change your mind as to who's coming out on top here? Because of the way the game went, if I'm honest, I just kept, I could only see one winner, Manchester City, because they had so much possession of the ball. And even second half, when Manchester City went 4-2 up, Tottenham, like, some was like, on the edge of his own box. Llorente was making tackles at the right-back area, and I thought, well, Spurs are never, ever going to get out. Then, obviously, the one time they do get out, get a corner, they get the goal from it. So, the whole way through the match, I still expected Manchester City to win, because they just dominated from start to finish. OK. I mean, it'll be a long time till the dust settles, but, first of all, VAR tonight... Does that show why we need it, that game tonight? Because it's often said that referees need help and on the big occasions they have to get the big decisions right. 
So on the basis they got them right tonight, is that not a terrific advert for it? Yeah, I, I, I do. I'm, I'm still, I'm not, still not sure Lorenzis has in his arm because of the mm, way his muscles move in his arm. I mean, his arm moves the muscles in it. So I'm not sure about that. There was an angle that it did look like it did, but didn't feel that he went in like that. So it, 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 it's not in an unusual <coughs> position. It is, it, it is his arm. My problem is we're not seeing it. I don't like that. No. I don't, that's my opinion. I'd rather... If they go to VAR, I'd like to be able to see yeah. it at the same time and see what we're looking at and instead of... Well, you saw, you saw the Lorente one. You saw that. You saw yeah, it I see that rolled. one. I didn't see the what's the, name one. Didn't, didn't, at the end. See, yeah, we didn't really see that one. And there was one before that, uh, the Ericsson one, mm. when he has the shot. I know it's company's back in the end. But there are ones that we're not seeing. I watched, I watched uh, Juventus yesterday. We never see them against Ajax. OK. Tonight, obviously, that's the historic quadruple off, but let's talk about Spurs first of all. You don't win a trophy for it, but how significant do you think tonight's result is in this new Tottenham era? Yeah, it's massive. I mean, you talk about the semi-finals of the Champions League, and, and as Paul was saying earlier, yeah, Ajax have had an unbelievable run, but I reckon Spurs will be looking at this game thinking, well, I'd rather face them than Barca or, or Liverpool. So this is a, an avenue for them to, to get to the Champions League final. Now, obviously, a lot of people spoke about, I've been one of them saying they need a trophy, but listen, the Champions League run, to get to the final, it's massive. Going to the new stadium, exciting times for Spurs at the moment, really exciting times because people have criticised them a lot this season. What, what is their ambition? Is top four all they're, they're aiming for? But for them, as I said, to be in the semi-finals now, the Champions League, with a chance to get into the final, it's massive. Does, what, what sort of credit does Pochettino deserve tonight, Paul? Or really, in truth, is it a game that could have gone either way? Uh, it could have gone either way, but... You know, they've they've just beat one of the best teams in the, one of the best club teams in the world. You know, we 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 go mad over Man City. How great they are! They scored bundles. They they've done these over two legs, mm. two legs. Not 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 a ninety minutes tonight or 96, 97, mm. How long they played tonight? This was over two legs. You know, they done the business in the first leg, kept it very tight, scored late on. They 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 deserve a lot of credit. To be fair, when he put Lorente on, I was sitting there thinking. I'm not sure yeah. about this. This is early. Because as, as Darren said, you know, there was no, no get out. You know, I'd have probably gone Son up front and had a bit of, play, a bit of pace or more up front and, and tried to at least pin them back a bit. But because Lorente come on, they, they could squeeze Man City and anything over the top wasn't going to hurt them. But in the end, it paid off because he was the one who scored from the corner. So fair play, Pochettino. I, you know, I'm a big fan of Pochettino's, you know, and... He deserves it, you know, I think so. In my opinion, I'm a big fan as it is, of his and, you know, to take this team where they are. And, and there was, there's been a lot of injuries, you know. You're looking mm -hmm. at the, the bench weren't mouthwatering. It wasn't one of no, them benches yeah. you looked around and gone, oh, I've got goals on the bench. So, you know, to all, to all of them, you know, we are always sit there and go, oh, you know, VAR, and, oh, they were unlucky, Man City. No, there's credit where credit's due. Tottenham have have been up here when they were 2-1 up and looked like they were going through and then they're 4-2 down and they're up against it and they still had that fight to come back and, and that takes a lot, a lot of bottle. Without taking anything away from a terrific Tottenham performance, 4-2 up, an hour gone, have Manchester City let this slip or you've got to give the credit to Tottenham? Which way round? Um, you've got to give credit to Tottenham, I think, because Manchester City, they didn't take their foot off the gas. They kept press pressing for more goals, they kept trying to create and they had one or two half chances. And as I said, they've, they've really pinned Spurs in. So I wouldn't say they tried to like, maybe take the mick and just keep possession for the sake of it. They kept pressing, pressing, pressing and got caught with a sucker punch at the end of the day because, as I said, I couldn't see Spurs getting out. They were pinned on the edge of their own box. Man City kept trying to create, create, trying to find little holes, couldn't do it. And then, as I said, they get that one opportunity. They break away, get a corner and it's 4-3. Well, the, pro the problem Man City have, and it, was, it showed again tonight, teams don't have a go at Man City. They turn up every weekend yeah. and no-one has a go. You watch them last week, Palace away, you're thinking... Oh, this is our game. Palace away, you never know, you're a bit of pace. It was forwards against defence for the whole match, virtually, but mm. with ten minutes ago when it went 2-1, you always thought, oh, a corner here or a free kick, you never know. Yeah. Tottenham had a go and they got the two goals and that was it. They left themselves open at the back and I, I, I just think concentration levels for Man City are not the greatest. I just think at the back, if teams can have a go, and we've seen teams in Europe this year have a go at them and score goals, I know... I know they, they play a game of you have a shot, we have a shot, we're better than you in the Premier League. And, and, and it, they've come unstuck tonight. They, you have a go, we have a go, and, and Tottenham have got enough goals. And the Famous away goals, they're ruthless. I thought 1-0 was a bad result last week, a bad result. 
you know, you're better off getting 2-1. You know, as long as you don't start getting really hammered mm. away from home, 1-0 is a bad result. You know, many years ago when I was in, in the... Uh, in the Cup Winners' Cup, 1-0. I mean, it was a big football result, 1-0. You know, you, you've always got a chance. You, you know, don't let that goal in. And I, I thought they missed the trick, Man City, with not scoring an away goal. I mean, Pep and all the players themselves, they've never, ever played up any talk of the quadruple. Mm. But how devastated do you think they will be to have gone out tonight and in that fashion? And what effect does that have on you? Yeah, but it'd be devastating just for the fact that they've made it no secret that they want to win the Champions League. I mean, if you, if you ask Manchester City fans, players, go which way, either Champions League or Premier League, the majority of them are going to say Champions League. And I, I just think it's, it's another year on now, they've got to go again next season. I mean, I thought this was a great opportunity for them to get to the semi-final final. And it's not happened for them again, but as I said, I don't think any of the players would have talked up the quadruple because it doesn't seem like that kind of environment. No. But, but I do believe that it'll be a big blow to them and they've got massive two games coming up against Tottenham again and then Manchester United in, in the derby. So this, this next 10 days is going to be massive for Manchester City, I think, and I think will really define their season. They've really gone out of the Champions League. If they were suddenly to get maybe one point from the next two, Liverpool, all of a sudden, are in the ascendancy. Do, do you think, and certainly not arrogance, but confidence, because they're only one down from the first leg, despite what Paul says about being a good result, that City would have expected to go past Tottenham tonight? Yeah, I mean, I would have expected them to, being at home, and it being only 1-0. I know it's a dangerous result, but only 1-0. Mm. They get one, which they did straight away, which was, was the perfect start for them. They score after two minutes, you think, oh, here we go, they're going to open them up. But, as I said, you, again, you, you, you can't really aim any criticism at Manchester City, I don't think. I think it's all about Spurs today. I mean, I think Spurs can only play one way, which is they come out the blocks fast. I think if they tried to sit in there and maybe contain Manchester City, they would have come unstuck. But because they came out there straight away, goal, goal, that's what set them up for the rest of the game. I still... <laughs> I still think, you know, you letting in three goals at home is poor. You know, this is mm. two-legged Champions League games. You, you need to little, be a little bit tight. You know, you can't be free-flowing. Like, I, I, just, I just think they, they, they play against too many weaker teams in this league that come and they don't mm. give a threat. And Tottenham turned up tonight with a threat. And they hurt them. The first two goals, that the defending was all over the place. You know, all over the place. You know, you've got to make sure with the quality of player they got on that pitch, that back four stays where they are. They don't have to bomb forward. The two goals that Tottenham score, they're not far away, especially the second one, Son's one where he bends in. It was like an extra time goal. There was no one there. Yeah. Tottenham were nowhere, you know. And Walk it was in the first five, five minutes. Well, Walker's halfway <laughs> up the pitch, you know, he doesn't get back. By the time he has to sprint back, he's sprinted past the ball and then it comes to Son who just comes inside. And, you know, you've got to, you know, you've got to have a bit of game management. You can't take liberties with teams all the time. You can't just say, I will win. It don't work like that. I mean, it will go down in Spurs history as one of their great nights, mm. no doubt. And even more so when you think about it, I think. In the previous eight visits, they've won once. Hmm. And the, play, the amount of players missing tonight as well, they even lost Lamella in the warm-up, didn't yeah, they? Yeah. So they were literally... And, and of course, no Harry Kane, too. Well, it, it's an incredible, I, I mean, it's an incredible the, result the, for Spurs, the, isn't it? 100%. To go, to go to Man City... I mean, everybody in Europe would be looking at this result. Everybody would be going, yeah. wow. And it's not, it's not, the, it's not the, the gone through. It's they've scored three goals. They've gone mm. there. I know they've let him football, but they, this is two-legged games. You know, anybody wins on a one-off game. I've seen it a million times in FA Cup shocks and 90 minutes. Two legs, two legs, not one leg, two legs. And for them to go here and score three goals and, and to show the bottle to have a go. Yeah. Second half, second half, don't get me wrong, as Darren said, they were pinned back for many a time in that game. Could have easily put their heads down and gone, there's no way getting out of this, you know. 4-2 yeah. down, you know, we're out kept on going. You know, you don't take anything away from Tottenham. This is a phenomenal football result and and they, they have every chance of being in the final. I mean that. I mean, Ajax are good, but if Tottenham play like they can and play to their best ability, Tottenham will be too strong for Ajax. Come to Ajax in a second, but once again, what did we see in the absence of Harry Kane from a number of players, but particularly from Son? I don't know what it is about that. I mean... Harry Kane obviously missed the last part of the season, just gone, and Son stepped up again, scoring goals. Harry Kane goes down again, and he stepped up again. So it, it, it's hard because if Harry Kane's fit, he's got to play, regardless. I know maybe their chemistry between him and Son might not be great, but him being one of the best strikers in world football, he has to play. But I think it's testament again to Spurs and the squad because, as I said, they could have hung their heads when Harry Kane got injured again and said, oh, that's it, we've got no chance. But Son is like he said, you know what, I'll take the responsibility, I'll step up here. 
and he's done it again tonight. What you say the chemistry is not great. What have you made of what you've seen? It's just not a pair, or not that a pair, but obviously, if you look at sometimes their goal records as well. Obviously, Harry Kane was out. Son scored all these goals. Harry mm. Kane comes back. I don't think Son scored for the first five games or something. And didn't even look like himself. As I said again tonight, and even the, the well, more so tonight, I'd say Harry Kane wasn't there. And it's like some plays with a freedom gets a shot, and he looks like he's their vocal point. So what happens? I mean, every time Kane's fit, he's going to play, isn't he? Hundred percent, yeah. But are they equally or even more dangerous with Son? No, because you need Harry Kane on the pitch, I believe. I mean, listen, it's a fantastic result tonight, but I think over a season, a long stretch, you need Harry Kane because, listen, he scores 20 to 25 goals every season without fail. So if he can get them amount of goals and Son can still get his piece, then Spurs have got, got a real dynamic duo there. You've seen Ajax, Paul, uh, a number of occasions. Very young side. I think the average age is 24 or less. Wow. Mm, good too. Uh, bids left, right and centre from all over Europe. Um, Frank de Jong already going to Barcelona. Going to Barcelona. <laughs> he's, he's pushed yet with, with pace. What, what do, is the biggest threat that they pose, not just their technical ability, but purely because of their age, they play without fear? They do play without fear, but we're in the Champions League semi-final now. <laughs> this is not, you know, this is, this is not, you know, your league games and going to Juventus where you've got nothing to lose or to Real Madrid where you've got nothing to lose and, and the other teams sort of half took liberties with them. Tottenham won't do that. Tottenham will give them respect and then they'll give Tottenham respect and it's the semi-final. There'll be nerves both ways. I think it's whoever handles the nerves best. When you're a young player and you get nerves, you know, the centre-half, he's 19. I mean, it's, it's not right. It can't be right. He's 19. He, he looks like he's played a 1,000 games. He's uh, Seriously, it, it's, it's, you can't be that good at 19 years of age playing at the centre-half. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it, it's, just, it's just unreal and it will be a good game. Don't open the game up, Tottenham. Don't open the game up and go, you have a shot, we have a shot, because these will rip you, they will rip teams to, put, uh, to shreds. They, Juventus done it yesterday and they went through them like a knife through butter on many occasions in the second half. And I've seen them, and they deserve to, to, to slaughter Real Madrid. That weren't a fluke, but I just think Tottenham would just, would just be too strong. I think defensively, you know, they're very good and I just think that yeah, I, I think Tottenham will get to the final, I really do. The other thing we mustn't forget as well, because it's far from home and hosed in the league, these two meet again on Saturday lunchtime. Yeah. What effect will tonight have on either side for you, Darren? Um, I think Spurs obviously will take great confidence that they can go to obviously Manchester City and get the result. I mean, I know they lost in the night, but over two legs, as Paul was saying there, they've, they've got the result. I think Manchester City will go there frustrated, um, annoyed obviously about tonight's result. And they might want to go there on, on Saturday and put a, put a show on and make a statement, real statement, because, as I said, they're, they're fighting tooth and nail with Liverpool for the league. So it's a massive game. I think Liverpool play Cardiff as well. Which on is, Sunday. Yep. So you'd probably like to think that Liverpool are probably going to win that game. So I think Manchester City will go there uh, on the weekend and real put a show on and make a real statement. They need to. They're, four, they're, they're one bad game away from a bad season, in my opinion. And I, I, mean, I mean that. This is a top-quality team. This team should win the league. It should win the league. It has the players. To win the FA Cup in the League Cup... I don't, I don't see that as a, a big deal for them. You know, I know they haven't won the FA Cup yet, but if they won that, that that's not a big deal. With this squad, mm -hmm. they're a shoe in for the League Cup to start with. Everybody rests everybody. So, mm -hmm. for me, they're, they're, the pressure's on now, massively on. They're, they're 90 minutes away from, for me, a bad season. I'm sorry, second's no good for Man City. Got too many good players. How can you go from the cusp of immortality mm -hmm. to a bad season? I mean, if they come second to Liverpool in the league, it'd be record points second. Still, I, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. I, 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 that's me. I, I've always, I've always played the game. You got to win. You got to win. I've always, I was always brought up. You, you win, come second. Waste of time. Absolute waste of time. You know, you know. You just, it doesn't for me. It does. This is a top quality team. Don't forget that top quality team. With, mm. with you look at that bench. That bench would, any time they play, that bench would get into any other team that they're playing against. So, mm. for me, they're, they're 90 minutes away. If they win the league, I, I think that's a bigger feat than the Champions League. Don't get me wrong, because Liverpool can go and win the Champions League and they've lost more games in the Champions League than what they've lost in the league. So, yeah. for me, Man City win the league, it's still a big thing. And I, I think the only person that can stop Man City winning the league, in my opinion, because it's still in their hands, is Marcus Rashford. And he's the only person that can stop Man City winning well, the league. Even in the form that Manchester United are in right now? 
Yeah, because he's he's someone we've seen tonight. You get a bit of pace against this Man City team, like yeah. Son did, he will hurt you. Because <coughs> too many of the players for Man City, like Walker, they, 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 they've got plenty of pace, but they've become lackadaisical with their pace now. Mm. You know, like Walker, he's bombing forward and it's like, I'll get back. But no, because you, you get quick players like yeah. Son and you don't get back quick enough. We see it at the start of the season with William. You know, he's up the pitch, they break. William just runs past him, he can't get back. You know, you pace pace will hurt Man City, and the only person that can stop these winning now because they'll beat Tottenham. Tottenham, Tottenham would have Tottenham have worked very hard tonight emotionally, yeah. <laughs> everything. They'll be drained, and this not next season. They have got another 38 games in the league. They got another 38 games. This is a once in a lifetime. This might never happen again. Never. You can play as many times as you want, and you're getting. A team that I don't even think the top of the Dutch league in the semi-final of the Champions League comes. This don't ever come. Don't yeah. ever come. Can Tottenham go there on Saturday with absolutely zero pressure on themselves? Now, I know top four isn't guaranteed as yet for Tottenham. Yeah. It's not. But are they on absolutely <coughs> no pressure whatsoever? I'd say so, yeah. They can go, it's like a free hit in some respects. Because as you said, yeah, they want that top four. But they're going to come to a point, I think, where they're squad and the injuries. And obviously Sissoko went down as well. So that's another body. Mm. They're going to have to start prioritising what way they're going to go, I think, because I don't think they've got the Manchester City score or the Liverpool score, big numbers where they can go, right, Champions League and the Premier League. I think they're going to have to start prioritising one. And as Paul said there, semi-finals of the Champions League, it might never, ever happen again. So I think it's going to come to a point where they're going to go, well, you know what, let's put all our eggs in this one basket and just try and win it or, or get to the final. Mm. Whereas I think that on Saturday against Manchester City, I think Manchester City will be more amped up because of the result tonight. And Tottenham, in some respects, is like a free hit. Like They want that top Could four, but... Could they, sorry to interrupt you, I'm just challenging you there though. Could they be drained and could, they, could it have taken so much out of them rather than being ramped up? Could they, could they be flat? It was Manchester City? Yeah. No, I don't think so because, again, the Premier League's massive. If they can go and win the Premier League, then it's a successful season. The Premier League, yeah. if they beat Watford in the FA Cup and they've already got a cup in the bag, then three trophies again, but the Premier League's massive. But if they had to lose the Premier League and then win them two cups as Paul saying there, I don't think that's a very good season for them. For a club of that, that quality and the players they've got, it's not a good enough season. Now, we've had our first tweet of the evening in. I'm not quite sure what the thought is behind it, but do you think that the away goal rule should be scrapped in favour of penalties when it's level on aggregate? No. No, because no, I, I think you give, it makes you have to go away and score a goal. It makes you have to go away, I think. That's the name of the game. Go away, be brave, get a goal. Otherwise, mm. I think you'll see too many games, nil nils. Dead and... rubber games, yeah. Yeah, I just, I, no, I, no, I think... I, I, I personally like it because, it, as you said, you were saying earlier, you know, huge respect for a 1-0 home league. Because yeah. it's, it's more... It's, it is more tactical, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. I mean, it is. And it, it, when you get down to this part of the season, it's nitty-gritty, you know, your top teams, you've got the top coaches in the world who are there, and they've they got to pick their brains against teams. And teams, you know... Even Tottenham nil-nil at home sometimes is a good result. You know, one-one, two-ones. I, I just fought over two legs. I, but I still think if Man City win the league, I think it, that that's big. It is still big, and they've got to do it the hard way. They've got to do it the hard way. They've got to go and beat. But Tottenham, I think Tottenham rest players. I really do. I, I don't think a lot of these players. I think as many as they can rest will not play on. On on Saturday because they, they, they'll be very tired. It's a quick turnaround. And they've, they've got a once in a lifetime a game. You, you can play the rest of your career and you won't get this opportunity. It's not like they're playing Barcelona in the mm. semi final or, or a top draw Real Madrid of last year or the year before. No disrespect, this is a very young, very good young Ajax team. But if you had to pick who you were going to play in the semi final, these will be it. Yeah, okay. And I'm not, I'm not disrespecting Ajax, no. don't get me wrong. No, I don't think, but I don't think anybody would this, say you this are. league. We, we, these play, they should be, if they don't open the game up and they show them enough respect, they've got to rest players. And I think Tottenham have got to be in a position now where they've got to go, you know what, we ain't going to win this game and they'll pick another game to win in the yeah, league. Yeah, and that's tactical. Yeah. It's going to have to be. So, how do Liverpool beat Barcelona? Terrific achievement to get to the semi-finals by Liverpool. Obviously, in the shadow of the other game tonight because of the nature of the other game, but mm. tremendous result over two legs by Liverpool. Yeah, I mean, Liverpool, again, they probably looked at that tie against Porto. I know I certainly looked at it and thought Liverpool would go through, just because I think they've got too much strength in depth. Um, they've got key players that can score goals on a win whenever they feel like it. And I feel against Barcelona, it's going to be difficult. I mean, well, I don't know, where's the first leg against Barca? 
Somebody in my ear will tell me. <laughs> <shortly. that> <laughs> I think that could be key because I said if they can get maybe Barcelona at, at um, Anfield next at the second leg, then I think that'll be played dividend. But it's going to be hard to beat Barcelona because we saw them last night against Manchester United. I mean, they've got that number ten magician who can just seem to just turn games on his head like that. And I think the key to them beating them, they need to stop him. I mean, I know it's easier said than done, but first legs away, is it? Mm. So they've got a chance. If they can stand the game. Listen, like what, one thing about Barcelona that causes them problems is pace. And Liverpool have got that in abundance with Salah and Mane. I, I think Liverpool beat Barcelona. Yeah, they've got the yeah. I, I don't see how you're going to live with the front three, and I just think Van Dijk will, will show that he's the best in the world, and I, the best centre-half in the world, and I think he steps up, and I think the three going forward will be miles too, too quick. Too much pace. Miles too quick for Barcelona. And we see that first five, ten minutes the, last night with Man United. First five minutes. You know, if they'd have scored early, early doors, who knows then? You know, but... You've, all, you, you've always got Messi, I mean, he's scored out of nothing. I mean, poor Ashley Young gives the ball away any other day against any other team in the world. Nothing happens yeah. in that. And how, how much will tonight's result, although Liverpool were favourites going into tonight, but them winning and Manchester City going out, how much will that galvanise Liverpool's league campaign? No, I, I think it works against the 29 years of winning the league. I really do. Why? Because I just think... They got another two games now against Barcelona. Mm. I think it has to be in the next two games. I think if, if, if Man City win the next two games, I don't see how they get stopped because Liverpool played two games against Barcelona. Man City have got a rest then. Yeah. But I think the next, the, next, the next four days, that Saturday, Wednesday, them two games, they win them. But yeah. For your money then tonight, City going out as... Oh yeah, it's made them more more of a more of a good thing for me to win the league. I agree because now Man City do really have got to focus on the Premier League now. Whereas Liverpool again have got to focus on now beating Barcelona. How do they do that and the Premier League as well? But whereas Manchester City now go, okay, listen, we've gone up the Champions League. Let's just focus on the Premier League now. The only advantage Liverpool have, them two games are now straight after they've gone out. You know, if it was just Tottenham this week and then Man United the following week, but it's a quick turnover. 